Hey, what's up, everybody? Big Hurt Prison Talk. You tuned into another episode. I'm here with the homie Wes Watson from Diego. And, uh, you know, we're out here telling some stories, man, because you guys ask a lot of questions and I like to give you a different perspective. So, you know, Wes, man, a lot of people, they are always inquisitive about, you know, prison gang, you know, A, B, this and that. And, you know, to not really expose too much, but how did you get involved in, you know, prison gang? You have no fucking choice. If you roll in and you're a white boy, you're in a gang. There's no way around it. You're not going to roll Christian. You're not going to do your own thing. Mm. You're going to report to me or some higher up and, and you're going to be told what to do. It is, the, the main phrase is, it's not a, it's not a fucking di- democracy. It's a motherfucking dictatorship. You're going to be told how you get down, and that's it. Yeah, because I know, uh, especially in the fact, you got a lot of dudes, they, they, you know, they roll in, oh, I'm with the Lord, you know, I'm with Christ. No, it's you not know, happening. You know? it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't It ain't happening. happening. It's not flying. <laughs> I mean, you, you can go to church on Sunday. You can go to church when they call it, but you're probably going to be bringing something from our block to someone who's on the other side of the yeah, yard yeah. because that's the only time they meet. So you, so the only time multiple buildings and multiple yards meet is at church. So mm. guess what? You're going to church. Hey, hey man, you go ahead and bring this to fucking go, go bring this to the homie. And, and how, <laughs> how you probably don't even want to go no more. <laughs> He's like, man, nah, man, you're a Christian every Sunday. Hey, and you and got, t- but you got to remember when you walked in, I told you anything I asked you, the answer is yes. Yeah. But there's a whole thing. You can take off on me if you want. You, you have every right to, but, but I don't think it's the best decision. You know? So we were just talking a minute ago and we were, we, you know, you kind of mentioned something about <clears throat> how serious it is as far as just how you carry yourself and some of the protocol. Could you, uh, you know, explain a little bit about like say an instance <clears throat> where somebody would have to handle their business, even though they thought that something wasn't that serious. I mean, this one of the worst scenarios, I got two, okay, level four yard, no hands policy, you're going to have to book someone, you don't bring it up unless you're ready to take it all the way, you just shut the fuck up about it unless you're ready to take it, you're ready to handle it, so a cop flips our cell, trashes everything, whatever, I'm super calm about it, I know the get down, I don't say nothing to the cop, I just go in, I start straightening my shit up, here's my dumbass fucking celly, talking mad shit to the cop, I just put my head down and I wait for it, you know. The cop's like, okay, 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 young, I'll be back. About 10 minutes later, our dude who's got the block, skinhead, rolls up, slides about a 10 inch bone crusher under the door and says, hey, Steve, come here, man. He hits him in the foot. He's like, oh, fuck, what's up, man? He's like, he's like, that cop disrespected you. Let's go. I'm ready to roll. Put your fucking boots on. That fool pissed his pants. He's, he, Oh, no, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. He's like, okay, kick that shit back. Next time it's going through the back of your fucking head. It's as Mm. simple as that. You don't speak on it unless you're ready to roll. That's right. Here's another story. In the kitchen, different races. Uh, My my celly thinks that another race is snitching on him. It's actually a black. He thinks he's snitching on him stealing food and shit. Now it goes to the the higher ups. My celly brought it up to our people. Our people brought it up to their people. Now, all of a sudden, he, my people talk to the blacks people and they say, yeah, we know that dude's a snitch. We know he told on you. We don't give a fuck about him. Mm. Handle your business. He wished he didn't say that. They're like, you could take him out. He had to take him out. Mm. Then he's sitting in the back doing mad fucking time. Caught another eight to ten years because he couldn't just not worry about someone else's shit. Like, if, if you see something going on that ain't your people... Don't you didn't fucking see it. That's right. Like you have no you have no say on it. And okay, yeah, speak on it. You're gonna be the one to handle it. Don't even say nothing. You didn't even fucking see it. Yeah. So in other words, like you said, you know, a lot of people think, oh man, well, what was going on with this and that? As soon as you start gossiping, don't fuck you're dude, done. The, the, there's not even gossip on a four yard. Don't show too much animation on your motherfucking face. Don't, don't even look like you're having a good time or a bad time. Don't look like you're halfway pissed or fully pissed. That dude over there is plotting on you. He's all high and shit. He owes 150 bucks. 
he thinks you're all mad and you might be trying to get him. These motherfuckers lose their mind on the daily. They'll be up for 10 days on white. Mm. They, they, they fucking think you're talking about them. It's, it's the most fucked up scenario you've ever seen. And then, hey, you, maybe you're all smiling. You're talking about you just came from a visit. Now everyone thinks you're hitting and you got all the shit. And it just, it just, every fucking, you become an expert at reading body language and these dudes look for it all day. They're bored as fuck. They want to find any fucking reason. And um, as far as I know, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, how the guys in there who are doing all day, how they don't give a fuck they don't give how a short fuck. you are. You know, give a fuck. It, it, you, know you, you basically, you're in there with them. So, I mean, I know you've seen it plenty of times how guys come in there, you know, two or three years, and they think, oh, man, I'm, you know, I'm just going to get back out. And it's like, it ain't going down like that. Dude, I came in with 10. I thought I was so badass because I was with all these fools doing one and two years in the county, whatever. So I tell my celly, I go, yeah, man, I, I got 10, bro. And he looked at me with the biggest smile on his face. And I'm like, what the fuck? He goes, you're going home. I just got 10. He's telling me I'm going home. I said, how much did you get, Doug? 120. He's not going home. So, I mean, and, and the fact is, is these younger motherfuckers, they come in with two years or five years. You don't even leave the streets till you hit the halfway point on a 10 year term. You go two years, you don't even leave the streets. You leave the streets out like year five. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, these motherfuckers come in with two years, and I don't give a shit. They're going to put their work in, and I'm just thinking, hey, you got room to add another five? You got to put your work in, you're good. You'll be out in seven. I'm doing ten. Yeah. Your seven ain't shit. I'm doing three more than you. I always tell dudes too, you don't you don't walk around talking about how much time you got when you're getting out. You keep all that shit to yourself because it's a lot of a lot of people. Like you said, some guy like you walk out in the tier, he just always look. He's, he's just a miserable fuck. Miserable fuck. You know what I mean? He looks at you. Like you got you think you all that shining, and you know they want to bring misery on your campaign. You start getting short, man. <laughs> that, that's that's when the trials start. You're gonna have to start boxing some fools I mean, <laughs> if that's even yeah. a place you could fight. Yeah. But I mean, in, in the higher up yards, people really—they're stoked you're leaving. Like yeah. th- these dudes got heart. They—they've—they've they've realized the pain, you know, and they don't—they don't, they don't want to see you have it. But but when it comes down to um, to you know the smaller yards, th- these dudes are—they're pissed. They—they they want to get back out too, and and people will hold you from it. I used to tell people, I said, I, I say, quit, quit, you know, keep running your mouth. I'll make sure you stay longer, you know. Shut the fuck up and go home. And and they, you know they just. A lot of people can't lose that mentality of uh, of acting in a manner that they don't want, you know. But uh, it's just, it, you know, it's an unfortunate situation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I don't wish it on anybody, but I tell people, you know, once you get in there and, uh, you know, it's not like owing somebody on the street or I'll pay you back or shit like that. I mean, like you said, the drugs, I tell people to gambling and, you know, messing with the homosexuals, man, it's, it's, a, it's a no-no. Yeah, we, we, there's no, on, on the main line for white boys and, and, and on our side of the day room, which is the Southsiders, the whites, and there's, there's no, people don't understand there's no sort of any sexual anything. If anyone ever heard of anything like that, you'd both be killed. And that's it. There's, there's, there's just none of that. I don't speak on the other side, you know, people, people say shit, whatever, but as for GP, white, Hispanic, South side, everyone on our side, if, if anyone caught wind of that, the person's dead mm. and that's it. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Nobody plays that shit. So, but, but with the, with, you know, with the, the, the drug debts are the biggest problem and, um, you know, sometimes they'll be lenient and they're hitting, they got so much that they'll let you run up a big debt. And then sometimes, you know, they get their feelings in it and they want their money and, yeah. and they'll, they'll push up, you know, the homies will, will try to get you. They'll, they'll try to fucking, Hey, 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 you want to get high? And, and I'm telling my people, Hey, you, if you get high, just, just, I'm you're, telling you're you, part of that. You're next up to bat. That's right. So, so if you get high, <clears throat> you're going to be the first person to clean up that dude who couldn't pay his debt. So if, if some white boy can't pay his debt, the first people in line are the people who get high. So I'm going to say, you know, and, and then that still doesn't even go across the board. I mean, I don't care if you don't get high. If, if you got to put in your work, you got to put in your work. Yeah. Well, man, I know it's a serious game out there, man. And for you youngsters that are listening to this interview, you know, you guys better take heed and recognize because, uh, you know, it ain't all gravy up in here when you think you're going to be partying and getting tats and running around and coming out, you know, all this and that. You know, it's a lot more serious. So, um, 
you know, take advantage of this interview and listen to the homie Wes Watson from Diego, man, and um, subscribe to the channel. Don't be a weenie. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.